This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to answer the question, why is there no Ethereum Beach? This is a little bit of a strange question to ask, and so I hope you'll stay tuned for the entire video because I think you'll really enjoy the payoff. I started thinking along these lines after making yesterday's video about how I thought that the Hex cryptocurrency was a scam, and I was thinking about the culture surrounding Hex and how when it comes to crypto, how much the social layer really matters. The whole social layer that surrounds Hex is one of excess and it's one of decadence. People who are interested in Hex are usually incredibly financially illiterate, as you can find out if you check out the comments from yesterday's video. They're very focused on conspicuous consumption. They're focused on Gucci's. Gucci and Lambos and this sort of thing. They're also great examples of Dunning-Kruger, which is never that great for your movement. Something similar applies to XRP investors, and I don't mean to be unkind using these memes, but if you follow these spaces, you know that this is true for XRP and for Hex in particular. I enjoyed this meme about the Chad Bitcoin holder versus the Virgin Ethereum holder. This is a common Chad versus Virgin meme, which you may or may not be aware of, but I think it does point to some some important cultural differences. Uh, for example, the Virgin Ethereum holder has .eth and username, owns a crypto kitty and multiple NFTs, has Vitalik on notific notifications, etc. So what I want to argue in this video is that the social layer of your cryptocurrency really matters. Now, of course, it matters much less when you've moved to proof of stake and turned over control of your protocol and the whole consensus to large regulated entities like Lido and Coinbase, as Ethereum has done. Nevertheless, in spite of this, Ethereum culture I find to be extremely cringe, as I'll show you in these videos. I'm not going to play the Badger dance, but I'll link to this in the description notes below if you want to check it out. If you're, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd encourage you to hit that subscribe button and hit the like button as well. So what I'm arguing here is it's not to denigrate these other coins so much as it is to show how Bitcoin is a very special and unique asset. It's also very special and unique at the social layer. Bitcoin definitely has the strongest social layer of any protocol that I'm aware of. Bitcoiners are the most intelligent and self-aware group of people that I have to say that I've ever come across. These are people who are incredibly willing to question and if necessary, demolish conventional wisdom as we've seen over the past couple of years. Bitcoiners are also incredibly focused on the family and on having children, which I think is very, very important if you want your movement to succeed. And there's this meme that the best way to create more Bitcoiners is to make them with your spouse. And this is something that I'm definitely guilty of as well. I think Bitcoiners are also very focused on buying land, becoming self-sufficient. We always hear these talk about Bitcoin ranches and home gardens and self-sufficiency, tools of self-defense as well. And by parenthesis here, I would just want to say that Ethereans and a lot of these other types of crypto people, they seem to be quite disturbed by these tools that go pop pop, if you know what I'm saying. Bitcoin citadels in the Bitcoin culture is more than just a meme for Bitcoiners. We can see this Twitter account called Bitcoin Citadels has 13,000, 14,000 followers. And by contrast, if we check out the Ethereum Citadel Twitter account, uh, zero followers and a sad picture of Johnny Depp as the pirate. A little bit more about the Bitcoin social layer. These activities are highly emphasized and valued. That's running your own node, holding your own private keys. As we've said many times on this channel, no one in Ethereum runs their own node because it's too expensive and technically difficult. Instead, the culture is to trust MetaMask, to trust Infura, to trust Vitalik, and to trust Joe Lubin, who runs Consensus, which controls both MetaMask and Infura. So I think that this is actually a very good way to answer the question that we began this video with. Why is there no Ethereum beach? This is a question I've never heard asked before, but I think it's simply because the social layer is so weak in Ethereum and other ship coins, other altcoins. So many cryptos and blockchains offer absolutely nothing to the outside world beyond a few insiders 
and venture capitalists. By contrast, Bitcoin offers a global monetary network, as we've said many times, that's open to everybody, regardless of race, religion, nationality, net worth, etc. It's censor censorship resistant, which is becoming increasingly important, not just in developing countries, but also in developed countries like the UK, Canada, the US. Bitcoin, the Bitcoin network is also beyond the control of central banks and governments who want to control your money and debase it in order to harvest your life energy and enslave you. The same cannot be said for something like Ethereum, which is now controlled, the consensus is now controlled by large regulated validators like Lido and Coinbase. And so this coin is very prone to capture. When we look at how Bitcoin is spreading around the world, there's no other cryptocurrency like it. So for example, there's no other cryptocurrency that's been accepted as legal tender, as has happened in El Salvador. We have the beginnings of this movement with Bitcoin Beach in El Salvador, the first circular economy on Bitcoin, the first Bitcoin circular economy, which I think is very important. And now we have all these other communities springing up, perhaps an imitation of Bitcoin Beach. We have Bitcoin Lake, Lago Bitcoin in, Guado, in uh, Guatemala. We have Bitcoin Ekasi in a township in South Africa, and I'm going to link to all these descriptions, all these links in the description notes below. We have Borake, uh, Bitcoin Island in Southeast Asia. Here's an interesting uh, account of a visit to that island. We have uh, Bitcoin Island again. Here's another Twitter account that covers Borake Island, aka Bitcoin Island. So we have Bitcoin Lake, we have Bitcoin Beach, we have Bitcoin Island, and we also now have Cloud21. Siargao. This is an island in the southeastern side of the Philippines, and it was destroyed by a typhoon in 2021, and they're rebuilding it as a, a tourist destination that accepts Bitcoin. So I'm going to link to all these in the description notes below. I have to say that each of these locations probably deserves its own video, and I think this is an idea that needs to be elaborated more. Why is there no Ethereum beach? And I hope to do that in subsequent videos. Meanwhile, if there's another Bitcoin beach or settlement or Bitcoin lake or Bitcoin island that I may have overlooked, if you could let me know in the comments, I'd be very interested. And I hope at some point to visit all of these locations and really see what's going on in person. And if you're able to at the moment, I would encourage you to visit these places as well. And not just think of Bitcoin through the cyberspace community that it inhabits, but these real world meet spaces that are rapidly growing as we see Bitcoin adoption continue to spread on its way to taking over the whole world. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.